that you do, but we love it when you fit in. We feel you happy inside us like we could kind of sense it. But get back to your pride. We love your intuition. I just talked to my mom and she said you got gifted. Just pray you see for yourself. Ignore the blind critics. I be worried about life, not Instagram pictures. Sure, they be worried about me or who inside my mentions. I just tell them Lord knows like my favorite scriptures. You only a benefit to them when you was beneficial. Wish I could talk to Zakia. I'm just reminiscing. The closest that I'll ever get is through a great visit. Me and her mom still talk about our Andrew Burry and how I still bring flowers through the cemetery. Now that day goes by, then I don't feel those feelings. There is a monster inside. Shit is kind of scary. I hold my head high. I just deal with it. Me and my dog Autumn connected like the leaves falling. Told me that I would go far back when they had doubted. I hope I make her prouder. She always listened to the stories about my broken heart. Like when me and Briss split, I guess we grew apart. Marie from Michelle, she ain't play a part. It takes a different type of light to shine through the dark. Always believed in But I really couldn't blame them It made the best music through the pictures I was painting The colors never faded The colors never faded, honest Like, that was a story. Like, and I love so stories. Everybody know. I love stories. How could you not? Bro? I listen. zone in. Yes, I, I listen. You not. hear it, but you listen. No, I listen. Welcome to the Big Wolf Podcast, where the big dogs talk. I'm here with Not Artistry. I'm also here with a dynamic duo. We got a rapper and we got a DJ. These niggas mm-hmm. is going crazy. First off, we got our boy Andre Saunders. Now, you mm-hmm. niggas probably saw him before because he do a lot of stuff, not only in the community, but on the rap scene, it's getting heavy. And we got Will Nasty on the DJ tip. Now, mm-hmm. if you yeah. saw Andre, you probably saw him. Because it's like a machine, you know 11 what I'm saying? 11 times out of 10. 11 times. <laughs> so, look, so what I want y'all to start off by doing is tell the people where y'all are from. You know what I mean? Give us a little backstory. I'm from South Philly. 
16th and Catherine. I live in Uptown now. I'm from Germantown, uh, off Wayne Ave. You know, um, yeah, born and raised Germantown. Still in Germantown. <laughs> Good shit. A lot of people don't stay where they be at. So, like, how long have you been rapping? Like, what got you into this? Because you're a seasoned artist, obviously. You know what I mean? When yeah. you listen, you can tell that a lot of time has been spent and a lot of exercise has been put in. Probably over <coughs> 10,000 hours type yeah, shit. You know seriously. what I mean? So, fill us in on that. I've probably been rapping since, like, Probably like Damn, over ten man, years for sure, seriously. Because I joined this poetry group. All right, so I used to rap, but I never used to take it serious. And I was let me think. So if that was, I'm trying to do the numbers in my head. I remember I used to rap, but I never used to take it serious. Even in like middle school, I used to go to my uh my cousin house and like record like just freestyle before school that's early in bro you used to be I using was in, like, tapes what I was, was the tapes you was using he used yeah. to just pull up beats on his computer like on the lower this one they used to have to like mechs and stuff like there or whatever on the you know the old school version joints mm -hmm. and like he had just put beats on and i just freestyle before school mind you i'm like what probably like i was probably like 12 or something at the time so what y'all was recording on he had recorded on his computer the quality was trash but mm -hmm. It was just something to do before school. Like the little fake big computers. Yeah, I remember he used to go on like sound click, try to find beats for me and stuff like that. And like I'm real competitive, so I remember, and uh, I was like probably like eighth grade. I was so I, I probably was like what fourteen something like that. I remember uh, I had I had this little mixtape. We used to, we started recording on South Street. And like I ain't gonna lie, like when everybody was doing a DVD type stuff or like mm -hmm. doing a little freestyles, I do them, but I always used to make sure I had like songs in the tuck. Right. So I used to like write structured songs, mm -hmm. and I was like the only one doing it. Right. So everybody else was freestyling. Yeah. So I remember the little engineer boy got mad at me one time because I was like I ain't mean to jump him, but I was like no, nah, bro. Like I like my sound to be like this because I want like I wanted to do the songs with my friends and my cousins and stuff. We just had like this little group. But I was like, no, nah, like I want to head this to the side because I don't want all my songs to be freestyles. Right. And um, I remember I had gave this little mixtape to my uh <laughs> to one of my teachers, and this on this joint was like the freestyle, a lot of the freestyle stuff. And I was wondering why he took so long to get back to me. And then I was like, yo, you listen to that joint? And he was like, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't feeling it. But I used to rap like everybody else back then, like right. on that tape in particular, it was like, I'm gonna shoot you, I'm gonna do this, da 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 da, -da. all this stuff. Hey, I ain't really living it. Right. I wasn't really living yeah. it. Right. So. You just was then, talking like the shit you was hearing. Yeah. You was spitting it. That pushed me though, because like I knew I had the songs in the tuck, like when I was in, like, when I got to like high school, probably like ninth grade or whatever, like my friends used to want it, but yo, Dre, let me get your iPod, because I used to have all my songs on there. Mm -hmm. Yo, Dre, can I, can I, can you, can I play that, Joe? Can I do that? Yeah. The Nano Joe. What's your age? I can't even say that. I'm like 17. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. So, uh, okay. yeah, but I really, I, that's when, like, I had the songs, but I had, but I gave my teacher the, the little freestyle stuff, but I had the songs. So all my friends were like, damn, the song's hot. Dre writing a strong song structure. This was like right. my, like my space days type. Mm -hmm. So, but like, when, when my, when my old teacher said that to me, it pushed me. Cause like, he the one that put me on Lupe. Right. Where it's like, you got to rap about something. So I remember when, and, when he had, like dropped me off, I always freestyle in the car. But one day I really went home and wrote this rap. And I was like, yo, he gonna like this one. I called him on the phone one day, like, yo, I'm like, like I sound I real, I'm real competitive. <laughs> so I spit this rap for him on the phone, like da da da. He like, yo, you wrote that? I'm like, yeah. I'm thinking he about to not like it or something. He like, yo, that's on fire. That's the best thing you ever spit. And at, at that point is when I was like, yo, now I'm about to focus on lyrics and talk about like real experiences as opposed to just all the fake stuff Damn, I was talking bro, about. Before ninth right. grade? Yeah, I was, bro, I was rapping probably like freestyling in like sixth grade, like playing around with it. like. So when did y'all two click up? When, when did y'all be like, yes. when did it click in your head? Like, yo, together, bro, we could do some shit. Real shit. Because uh, having a DJ is heavy because so many people is out here looking for a DJ and looking for somebody to do the beats and stuff like that for you to already had it. Yo, I don't do like, nothing for them. Like, like real shit. I bet you wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't either. Like, it's... It's crazy because you want to tell it, or you want me to tell it. Yeah, it don't matter. Yeah, before it was. Yeah, tell, right, tell them how we first crazy. met, and then I yeah, fill it in. Yeah, put that in there. I'm a member of uh, St. Luke's uh, Episcopal Church in Germantown. And every year they the go. St. Luke's Episcopal. It's an Episcopal Church. Episcopal. I'm Episcopal. A church? Yeah, the church. Okay, okay. Yeah, Germantown, Dakota. 
And um, every year they would have what's called a uh, arts festival, youth arts festival. Mm -hmm. and, um, this guy by the name of Lloyd Lyons, he was like, uh, he like, he was like the um, the head of the arts. Uh, it was like a whole board of um, people in the church, but he was like the head to um, reach out to the youth, anyone twenty one and under, right, to um, come perform. Mm -hmm. you, could, uh, you could show your art, you could sing, dance, you play the piano, do whatever. So um, and I was, uh, he made me the house DJ for the um, for the event. And so uh, and prior to that, like before that, he used to tell me like, there's an artist I want you to uh, connect with. He's a name Andre. I'm like, all right, but we never like linked to none of that. But um, so the arts uh, festival came up. And he was there, and he introduced me, whatever. And um, yeah, he told me I had to uh, get his music and all that. Mm -hmm. So that's how that was like first time me and Dre. Yeah. And how was you when you listened to his music? I was I was amazed actually, cause normally, <laughs> like I, I do shows and stuff all the time. Right. And, like everybody, music people should be garbage. Yeah, be trash. Just, just be honest, like, 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 like people should be garbage. Like, like, like I don't want to listen to this shit. I'm gonna play it, but I ain't. I ain't about to be bobbing to it. Yeah. He, when he performed, I had, I had his playlist, but I queued up. I'm listening. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is different. Can't wait for him to go on. And he went on. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, that was the first time we, uh, yeah, yeah I met Dre. It's crazy. Was, Everybody had good shit to say about you, too. They like, yo, check for Andre. You know what I mean? Check I for appreciate him. that. It's hot. Yeah, Would you get into, like, branding things? Like, you see how, like, Soldier Boy and um, Bow Wow, they about to be wrestlers. Yeah. They doing a little rollout. Like, they beefing with wrestlers online. What? Talking, going back and forth with Randy Orton and shit. Yeah, I did see that. Would you do something like that if they like, yo, we want you in the WWE, like, for an episode? <laughs> if I was really, like, <laughs> I, would, I would if it made sense. Yo. Like, it I, might make sense. Make it make sense. I'm not going to lie. I like fun stuff. Like, people, I think sometimes, like, my more my new music is more fun, but my old music is, like, serious. So people mm. think I'm a serious person all the time mm. if you don't know me in real life. But, like. I never, like, I watch a lot of YouTube and, like, the prank videos and stuff like that. So, wow. like... The practical jokers? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I start shooting prank, prank videos with my uh, yeah. friends, the group Verbosity. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I always wanted to do it, but I never had nobody to do it with until it was like, yo, let's do it. So, we start yeah. doing pranks and stuff. And I'm like, yo, this shit really that funny. So funny shit. To that shit. Like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I like doing it, yo. Like, I think people be thinking I'm serious, but I'm, like, mm -hmm. if you know me, I'm the most playful one out the group. Yeah, it's it so just that. Right. If I get that a lot too. Know. Like people think I'm serious and shit. I'm a big ass goofball. Like I Same. laugh at the like. I like and people say I got white people sense of humor. I work. I I watch a lot of white people comedy. Uh -huh. It's funny oh, so as you shit. Get the white humor. Yeah. Because they're start more sarcastic. Yeah. I love sarcasm. Like Seinfeld. Like I love that shit. <laughs> like Seinfeld, yeah. definitely fuck with Seinfeld. <laughs> We gotta find ways to do sarcasm better so they're not so offended. Right, 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 right. Just because you ain't get it. Yeah. It went a little over your head. Don't some be mad people, at me. Bro. Don't, don't get sarcasm, don't though. That's the big thing about sarcasm. Some people don't get it. And yeah. it's like, I always catch it. So when somebody being sarcastic with me, I would just laugh. Yeah. Like, I ain't exactly. gonna get mad. I'm just gonna laugh because that's some shit I would have said. So Period. let me let me ask y'all this. Who are some of the standout artists that y'all have worked with on tours or been around collaborated with like some of the talent out here let's give a little highlight you want to go first here man you go first off the top for Bossity. off the top yeah. <laughs> say it louder let's hear that shout out to Bossity. yes sir yes. and and a disclaimer a lot of this stuff like when we got in position to like run our school tours we get to select and we we design it ourselves and we get to select who we choose mm. We choose people that we really believe in your talent, but we got to be friends with you. I, I'm anti-social. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, if I don't rock with you in real life, I'm not really trying to do too so much you. So you be orchestrating it. Yeah. You be or Damn, y'all We do it together. All the artists that get booked for our school events or we put on our school events is like a, a personal thing. Or like even when we do cool drives and stuff like that, it's like we really like each other. Like we really got to rock with you Like even when we do cool drives and stuff like that, it's like we got to rock with you Because we had an experience where we put somebody on... A, a school event where I partially knew him or whatever, and he ain't do it to me, but he did it to him. But if you did it to him, that's like doing it to me. Right, he do, so man. it was, right, do it was like did. awkward. Where it was like, yeah, from this point on, mm -hmm. we gotta rock with you in real life because I don't like no weird politics or like no weird type stuff. So it's like we gotta be friends with you or to some degree. And it's like you gotta make sure who you put on to go on to get it done because this yeah. at the end of the day this is your business so yeah. you gotta make sure that shit gonna get done. Yeah. Facts. And also you don't like piss somebody on or like we say we do an event and you know, we invite them and then they don't like selfish intentions. Right. Selfish right. Intentions. Right. Yeah. right. So do you work with other people or y'all just work together? 
All right, so I work with, like, I like this process. It's funny you ask that question because I used to get beats from people, mm -hmm. but now I locked into where, like, people don't send me beats anymore. I work with one producer, and when I go to the studio, we don't, like, come in. I don't come to the studio with nothing. Only thing I come to him is with an idea in my head, and then we, like, we built, like, he make the beats on the spot, I make the raps on the spot. So I work with two people, him and my engineer, Mark. Mm -hmm. My engineer, Mark, he, like, makes, like, my, my album, Honest, he did the whole album. So, literally, when I go, like, I might screen record an idea or like something and, or, like, whatever, and I'll be like, yo, what you think it is? Da -da -da -da. And then he'll start building a beat around it, and I'll start freestyling in my head. Or I'll be like, there'll be times I'll be like, yo, stop right there. Don't do no more because it's going to throw me off. Or add more. Or he'll be like, I don't like this beat. So, he'll start, like, we literally make everything from scratch. So, you got the business. You got the product. Are you interested at all at like, looking for a deal? Like, are you looking for a if deal it makes at all? sense. Because yeah. I feel like the way the internet is, if you smart enough, and oh, I, I ain't going to lie, I learned or early on because I, I had a situation with a representative from Russian Records. That's what, like, where, where's Khalifa and first got signed. And he was like, yo, your music good, but I ain't going to lie to you. Nobody really going to necessarily sign you until they feel like they can make money off of you. Facts. Which was basically, like, telling me, like, you got to have your internet presence and all that type of stuff mm -hmm. good to where... And I'm like, okay, so you want me to do the work, basically, and then y'all jump on board. Mm -hmm. So I'm not against it. It has to make sense, and I'm not pressed for that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people that begin to sign, I feel like business-wise, based on my mind and me, my hard work, I don't want nobody to count my pockets when I say this. But I, I could sign myself. Mm -hmm. I got a line on the song on my new project where I literally said, get into it like I sign myself. <laughs> so it's like... It gotta make sense. Right. You don't gotta just talk street shit to be living your raps either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. That's a different type of flex right there. So who Real so shit. who would you say is your inspiration? I mean, if I was to be like Andre Saunders is a mixture of boom boom boom. Lauren Hill. Damn. Pac. Wale. Mm. Drake. He said we breaking the fourth wall mm. fuck they talking about. Yeah. That's heavy. That's yeah. a heavy lineup. They my favorite artist. It's crazy though. You don't like Kanye? Yeah, I like Kanye, old Kanye more. Yeah, old Kanye definitely yeah. more, yeah. So moving <laughs> yeah. forward, right, as your career grows, you seem more like the Russ type. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. a more knowledgeable beforehand, so you, you move a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. If you start, if your name starts getting put in narratives and stuff like that, is that something you're going to try to combat? Or... Mm, it depends. Like, mm -hmm. if it's weird, like, I don't be caring about a lot of stuff. But then if it's like what they say, let rumors be rumors, don't clear it up. Mm -hmm. So like if it's certain stuff, yeah. I be like, I don't care about it. people want to talk regardless of yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? But certain right. stuff, I guess like. But I'm a real private person in my personal life. But I'd be like, I don't really be tripping off stuff too much. Damn. It just I felt offended by that situation because that's like my brother. So it was like, don't treat him bad because he's a part of the reason. Like I know I'm the one that reached out to you. Mm. But if he would have said no, you wouldn't have been on it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, like, mm -hmm. I pitch artists to him, or he might, like, man, we know most of the same, like, people that we put on. But, like, in that case, that was somebody that I knew. Whereas, like, he pitched somebody to me before that I didn't know, but now we cool because of him. Right. So it's like, right. if I took the elf, uh, if I took the chance for you and he ain't know you, treat him with the same respect. Because if he would have been like, no, Dre, I don't think he fit, you wouldn't right. have been on it. They ain't had no manners, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no manners. No fucking <laughs> Bro, cause I, I, it, it might be somebody that I'll be like, yo, we doing something, and if we don't both agree on it, I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Like, because I respect That's foundational. Yeah. Fuck them. So, do y'all see, like, record label type vibes in the future for y'all? Because soon you're going to get bigger than artists. You're going to be like, you know what I mean? It's just like. Do you see yourselves cultivating, see. cultivating yeah. some yeah, shit in the it. future? You see it? I see it. Like, we doing it now. And it'd be <laughs> funny because people don't even notice because I don't talk about it. But if I show you, like, old emails and stuff, like, bro, I've been talking to labels since I was a kid. Like, seriously, bro. Like... This man knows celebrity. Because I, like... like on the con. And, <laughs> on the con. Like, I don't... I'm not the type of person that seeks attention. The person mm -hmm. like you is never going to be so short, though. And that's one of them things you can take with pride because it's like money don't drive you. Yeah. You do this shit like this is your your career. Like this is your path. Like you like live, dream, like probably shit this. 
it got so it's like you're not going to sell yourself short because yeah. you already know your potential and stuff like that. That's something good to have. Because a lot of people will sell themselves integrity. short just for the money. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. important. Shit. You know Fair. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So who are y'all listening to musically? Yeah. <clears throat> Who you listen to? On a Tuesday. I'm a DJ, so I, I listen to everybody. So it depends on how I feel for them. Oh, okay. Like one day, like in the morning, I might listen to oldies, 70s, 80s. Damn, like 70s? Me, I don't 70, know yeah, that I take it back. Like, yeah, yeah, that's 75. Mm-hmm. And like sometimes I all track. Sometimes I be in my R&B bag. Mm. I might listen to Aretha. <laughs> take, it with, take it back again. Yeah, that's what I listen to everybody. Listen to that's everybody. good vibes. I'm heavy nineties R and B boy. Damn. And I listen to like I listen to everything. You listen to Leah, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Yo, I, I got so many Leah references tell, in my bro. songs. I like um right now though, like people probably be surprised, but Future actually one of my favorite artists to be honest. Really? Yeah, wow. hell yeah. Cause sure. uh, outside from the trap stuff, if you really listen to Future, he be giving you a lot of pain and like mm-hmm. that, yeah. that, that talk. But like, of course I'm a Drake fan, Wale. Late, maybe I'll say the ones that's not popular. Can I say that? Hell yeah. Yo, lately. Heaven, heaven's yes. I like giving it like people who try and get there at 10, cause we already right. know who popping. Yo, right. I'm not gonna lie. Young boy that I've been listening to lately, I don't know if he, I guess he's from Philly, but he claimed LA too. What I like the young boy Sean Sloan. He hot. Sean Sloan. He hot. I like him. I be having Y'all his songs on, on repeat. Some shit. I need some new music to listen to. He hard. Hey, yo, I like lock that guy in, Sean Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> like I, be, I've been like searching for new sounds, so I'm listening to like the weird stuff right now. I like but why him. Though? Cause I'm on like I'm on my rock stars. Mm-hmm. My new project don't sound like none of my old stuff. So so is this experimental? Is this like mm-hmm. the furthest it went experiment wise? Myself? Yeah. Yeah, I always had it and wanted to do it. It just never happened. But now was this like I told first thing I told my engineer when I was tr- about the the song I played for you mm-hmm. was like yo this might sound terrible but trust where I'm gonna go with it and he didn't get it at first and then he was like oh, okay I see where you're going so the second song that I did with this new vibe. He was like, yo, I never told you this before. And your songs be hot, but this is might be a one. Mm. And mind you, I told him it might sound terrible at first. Right. So Experimental, like, nigga. Yeah, challenging myself. That's, Damn, that's the difference between that. the rap and the artist. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Shit, no limits. That's, that's what makes an artist. Mm-hmm. I feel like I ain't want to put myself in this box. And sometimes I used to did feel like I was in this box of where, like, People expect that poetic stuff or that real deep stuff from me. It was like, yo, if you try this, like, nobody else is doing it, so it's more pressure on you. But I'm like, yo, like, y'all going to appreciate me doing that stuff more when I switch my stand up and show y'all how versatile I really am. And I'm not going to abandon that, but just give me some time to level myself where I want to show. I want to do some creative stuff myself. I'm going to come back to that. And poetry is kind of deep. So when you can dip deep and do poetry, you can, once you can, like, Put that into music. Mm-hmm. It's fucking beautiful. Yo, I don't, like, real shit. I don't want to take no claims in that like that. But like in Philly in particular, and mind you, while ain't my man, but I ain't get this from him. I don't think no. Well, it's possible, but I ain't know nobody in Philly that was putting pure poems and songs before me. Like, and I know people personally that was a fan of my stuff and started to do it, and I was like. Damn, that's inspiring. Like, I don't want no credit for it, but like, I'm like, damn, I must have been kind of hot. Nah, but speaking into existence, because one day niggas are going to be wondering, because it's like, look at where you are now, like, two years, five years from yeah. now. Mm-hmm. It's going to be niggas that's like, your shit is just going to, it just only rises as time gets past. You know what I'm saying? So, you got a bright ass future, bro. Thank you. Real rap. Thank you. Y'all, right. heavy. Y'all came here heavy in the in the, in the building. <laughs> so so, what's the project that you dropped most recent? Honest, honest. Yeah. And then you said your new project that you're working on is where you implement this new this yeah. new sound. Yeah. So, do you want to disclose more information about the new project? That yeah, you're we can talk on? about it. Let's do that. All right. So, I was working on this idea I had called for granted. But then, like, that's when the pandemic and all that happened. Mm. So I was like, everything just was feeling, like, so unexpected. And then I was like, yo, I know I want to try new sounds. So, like, I was like, yo, we got this title called Unexpected. Because the sound is different. The times is different. Everything. Pandemic so, like, flow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so. Time to think. It's like, cause it's funny. When the pandemic first happened, everybody like, yo, I know you're going to have a banging album. with so much to talk about. da 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 and I'm like, yo, no BS. I'm the opposite. I don't got shit to talk. Cause I was having like, like, I just didn't feel it. 
I ain't got nothing to talk about. I know y'all want some deep shit. Y'all think y'all gonna get some deep shit, but I'm I can't force music. Like I ain't had no thoughts in my head, and mm. then it finally came where I was like, yo, like. Even with the songs I was doing, it was hot, but I'm like, yo, I ain't really talking about that. I'm just rapping on these joints. Like, and then it was like, I finally hit this switch where it was like, mm. creatively, I know where I want to go. And I, 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 I had songs that was good pockets. I was like, all right, these are the ones I'm gonna keep. These are the joints. And it's like, then I got in my singing bag. Like, mm. and I ain't gonna lie, I'm not a singer at all, but my engineer make me sound fire. And the ideas is fire, but like, I'm on some like rock star stuff. Like, I just want to so be on some rock star. So you talk about stuff different, or is like no, it's the same me. It's just like I'm focusing more on the flows. Different approach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, different approach. Like different the flows is approach. different. I'm I'm singing more. Um, it's like like I'm just like I don't know. Like no, it's it's unexpected. It's, like I'm not mm-hmm. in the box. Like let me just show you how creative I really am. Mm-hmm. So look, I got a question for you, Will. So as a DJ, what do you think the next level is for you? The next level. What's the next level? You know what I mean. What's based on your trajectory? I just Make some that word. Trajectory. Yes, sir. Big shows. Big shows. Mm. We're gonna be out. He already the resident DJ for a program, but we want to get him more res like residencies. What's, what's resident? It's DJ. basically like okay, so we run a program together where he's. It's basically like you ever heard of the term in house DJ? Like, you time. know, like Paul D or like people get booked for Vegas mm-hmm. where you get like, okay, we're going to pay you for 10 shows or you here for this amount of time. The pop-up stuff is cool, but we want to get like a foundation of where like, dang, we going to have you here set for a minute or we going to pay you this for this many things. Right. So like whether it be on a radio station or like certain thing, like we want to get them locked in with stuff like that. Mm, heavy. So that's weird. <laughs> So if an artist wants to work with y'all, what is the best approach that an artist could take to try and make a decent communication with y'all? That's a good question. Um, Be genuine. Genuine. Consistency. Thoroughness. Fairness. For thoroughness, consistency, and like... <laughs> what if they got all that but their music not good? Would y'all still work with them? And Someone who's if, consistent, they thorough. Yeah, I'll put genuine, you but they music just a little how not, what, how, what level were not good? What level? <laughs> All right, so like they probably just been rapping in the basement. No, see, I, I can't say no because I've done that, mm. but I learned on the, now I be a little hesitant, and I always was, but I learned a lesson because I did a song with somebody, got them in the studio. So they reached out and said they was a fan of one of my videos, and... I responded and um, they sent me a song that they recorded on a phone, basically, like a voice note. And I was like, yo, like, everybody got to start from somewhere. So I'm not a judgmental person. And I was like, bro, I hooked them up with my, one of my friends and got him in the studio. I even did the verse for him. I ain't charging for nothing. But on the back end, I got them on shows and paid situations and everything. Mm-hmm. But after they got some of the stuff that I introduced them to, I noticed how they supported other people that I introduced them to more than myself. And mm-hmm. I don't care about that, but it's the way you do it that would right. be like, who put you in position? Don't forget right. that. And right. be like, be genuine. Mm-hmm. So it's not always about, because if, if I see the potential in it, I'll, I will work with it for sure. Now, if it's something I just don't believe in, then I would tell you, like, I can try to give you certain resources mm-hmm. or whatever. But like, I'm not a selfish person. That's dope. Good attitudes out here, man. Good oh, mindsets, shit. good attitudes, good music. We about to do some links, man. So I want y'all to let the people know exactly where they can find you. So let's start with you. Oh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Yahoo, MySpace. <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. MySpace. Uh, Instagram, at Will underscore Nasty. Same as Twitter, at Will underscore Nasty. Uh, mine's is... You can find me on Instagram, Andre S underscore 1220. Uh, YouTube, you can type in 1220, Andre, that take you to everything. Uh, for our program, writersmatters.org. Oh, yeah. um, and like for most of the content, the new content, if you click on a link in my Instagram, it'll take you to it. It's like one link, but it takes you to everywhere. Let's go. He got that shit compiled together. Yeah. Yes, sir.
Bro, shit, I'm not artistry. You can catch me at N Y underscore eight R T I S C R Y. I'm I'm hooking up my link tree now, so after that, it's gonna be in my bio. Y'all gonna be able to get to all my stuff from uh -huh. there. But I'm a work in progress, so y'all just work with me. Let's go. <laughs> you got the right attitude, man. Yeah. But if y'all ain't know, it's your humble, gracious host, King Kali. If you wanna see some rap shit, find me on King Kali on YouTube couple's youtube channel and you already know we powered by big wolf energy big wolf. man big wolf podcast <laughs> i fuck with y'all this the show let's get it <laughs>